fantastic. So I'll, be, I'll give you a bit of a quick hint each time. Samba, turn the next page. So the most important question is why work in the ATO? So the next slide talks about our vision. So that biggest thing is when you're working for any organization, you need to know what the vision is. So for us, it's fairly straightforward is to be the leading tax organization that administers superannuation and taxation. And the important part for us is we want to be contemporary, an expert in our field, and show a high level of integrity. Next slide, please. So part of that, we have a 2024 vision, which is a real big push for our organisation. So we're looking at building trust and confidence within the community and the business sector around the, the taxation and superannuation systems. We're also being, we're, oh, I can use some background noise, being streamlined and integrated and data-driven. So there's some really key elements for our organisation. So the next slide. The most important part of any organization is our leadership group. So we have our, our six executives and our leadership models changed over the last decade. All our, our senior executives, none of them started in the ATO. Our commissioner came from KPMG as a senior executive. He's worked on various community boards and boards, including the Sydney Children's Hospital. Our chief operating officer, Jackie, she came from human services. Then Jeremy, another KPMG, executive so we probably hunted a bit a little bit in kpmg then melinda our chief service delivery officer she managed the Woolworths supply chain nationally a billion dollar industry then ramiz came from accenture as from an executive role and then kirsten a lawyer in her own right came from clayton utz a highly regarded law firm so these guys have actually got a significant number of years of business acumen and leadership and what they brought is a shift in the focus of the organisation. So we're looking at a, a client-centric and probably the, the most important part, which I love about it as well, is our staff are our number one assets. So if we could move on to the next one, please. This leads into our, our grad program, which is obviously most of you want to hear about. So we've actually one of the top 100 employers in both Grad Australia and Grad Connect. So it's actually really a, a great program that we run. And next slide, we have that located Nationally, one of our real luxuries within the ATO, you can go to any capital city in any state. The only location we don't have anything is in the, in the territory. Reasons I don't know, but we can go across the, the whole country. Moving on to the next slide is actually our streams. So we are not just looking for taxation individuals. We're looking for IT. We're looking for data analytics, the data science, HR, the marketing communications, the design. So, like any business, we actually are multifaceted and we're seeking all those skills. On to the next one, please. So what is the, the grad program? It's a 12-month program. It's oh, We offer a training package, which is stream specific. So if it actually aligns specifically to your, your skill set, we're delivered by qualified facilitators. You get three rotations. Two of them are in your area of expertise and we ex expose you to various facets of the business. And then one's a, a client focus, because again, that's a big focus for our organization being client centric. We offer a mentoring program that gets offered post, oh, jumped ahead a little bit. <laughs> that's offered post program. So once you complete your, your grad program, you get aligned with a senior officer in the organization to get mentored in the following year. We also have a grad debate. So any lawyers that like debating out there, we have that grad debate where you get flown down to Canberra and get to present and debate in front of our, our senior exec. Come to the next one. And a little bit more about the organisation and some of the things closer to my heart is around workplace culture, which is very important. So we really drive around diversity and inclusion. We actually have specific strategies, which we all work towards. Same with reconciliation. We have a reconciliation action plan. We have a big push on social responsibility. We have our opportunities for people to join green teams. So they go out there and work out different ways can our organisation better leave a, leave a better or lesser carbon footprint. And work-life balance, like anything, is a very important element. And we have uh, work health and safety um, departments within our organisation really keep that in, in check. A big thing also with the organisation is about contributing to the community. We also get to work on a number of projects. The tax offices, you'd be surprised, there's a number of project-based work. 
So as a graduate, you'll be confronted with a significant amount of projects, opportunity to learn and expand your knowledge. Nice little kicker, 75,000 starting package. That includes your super. And also one of the things I do like about the program is post-program, you get offered your opportunity to develop your further skills. So if you're wishing to take your master's on or expand your knowledge in a specific field, we'll provide you financial assistance. On to the next slide, please. So our applications are currently open and they close at seven o'clock on the 19th of April. Please hop online and register. Also, then we kick off in February, so we go through our recruitment process over the coming months. Also, another slide, please. We've got a opportunity within the organisation where we offer a partnership employment program. Go to the next slide, please. Where this is a casual for full-time study students. So, if you're studying full-time and you have that ability to work, up to, we work at 15 hours a week, which could be five days by three hours, three days by five, or two at seven and a half. We offer that opportunity to be able to use, to see what the ATO is actually about and you're placed in an area of your expertise. So if you're an IT, you go into our IT department. If you're a HR, you go into a HR department. You have the standard eligibility for us. You need to be studying, studying a bachelor degree, GPA credit, because we don't want people who are struggling because we don't want that pressure added to you, and Australian citizen. And the Australian citizen standard for all our programs, whether it be the University Partnership Program or the grad program, reason being, where an organisation has highly classified information and other legislation to be able to get the access and authority to, to, to view that, you have to be an Australian citizen. There's the premise behind it. Off to the next slide. There's some information. If you hop on our, our web page, it gives all the, the details and so forth you need in there. Each of our pages have quick codes onto it. So if you type in the reference numbers, it takes you straight to the page when you do a search function. And I think really, Sam, now that's enough hearing about me. I think everyone wants to actually hear from the grads online. So I've got Olivia, Melissa and Aidan who have just completed the grad program and are now unleashed in the big bad world of the ATO. So I've got a few questions to, to probe them and get some thoughts and hopefully they, they help you and and making a decision and possibly applying for the, the, the grad program or even a university partnership program. So I'll kick them off. I've got my list here. So I'll pick on who goes first. Aidan, I might start with you. So tell us what a normal grad week would look like for you last year. Um, uh, hi. So, um, <laughs> so for me, um, because I was a, I was part of the IT stream, um, my um, average grad day might have been a bit different. So we normally had four days um, with our rotation team um, where we'll kind of learn kind of the technical role. And then um, we had one day of training a week as well. So um, for the, the one day training a week, it was kind of broken up into milestones and we had different milestone tasks that we had to do over the course. Um, yeah, and then there was also some uh, time to do a bit of kind of a bit of an overview of the ATO, kind of get a good idea of the um, like the wider picture kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then so during my my four days um, working with my um, rotation team, um, normally we would start the day with a um, stand up meeting in the morning where we'll basically go through all the work that everyone's currently working on what they'll be doing for the day. Um, yeah, and then um, after that, they, during my first couple of weeks, they kind of gave me a list of um, issues and grievances that they were having with the systems that they were currently um, running. And basically they said, learn the system, um, kind of come up with uh, good solutions and let us know. So yeah, that was basically my first couple of weeks was just basically learning and then, asking hundreds of questions. Um, yeah, and once I got a, a pretty decent idea, I started coming back with them with a couple solutions to some of their kind of uh, couple issues that they had. And then, um, yeah, started working further to get those implemented to get them working in the system. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Might pick on Melissa now. Just 
because each of the guys have done a different role. So I should have premised that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was in a data analytics stream um, in the grad program. Um, my background is in uh, mathematics. Um, so uh, I think uh, Damien mentioned that you have three rotations, two in uh, one, two relevant to your stream and one uh, in a customer service role. So in my stream um, rotations, one of them was with a data analysis team. So uh, typical day there, or typical week, um, as Aiden said, one day a week, we'd have some training in general, um, ATO-wide uh, uh, things such as tax law, or not tax law, the basics of tax, I suppose, for those of us who um, didn't study it. And um, also some learning um, in the data, science, data area, we were learning about different um, types of data analysis, I suppose. Um, so for a typical week in my team, um, we, the team I was working in, um, uh, I guess administered um, communications to taxpayers. So we monitored those processes and if anything went um, awry or wrong, we um, addressed those, um, rewrote code, um, mostly using SQL, um, which is querying databases. And also we generated some customized data sets for different business areas of the ATO. So an area may want um, some data on a particular subset of clients and we um, generated that data for them. That's very interesting. And no doubt Libby will have something just as interesting. Hi everyone. So I was in the taxation stream and I have a background in economics. So um, a general week for someone in the taxation stream, most people um, in taxation stream work in the compliance space. So that's assisting taxpayers and other clients um, just generally um, helping them with um, any issues they have um, relating to tax law and other issues as well. Um, but a general week would be going to meetings with taxpayers, um, hearing from them about their issues or grievances or anything that um, maybe we're looking into a particular issue um, of um, a compliance issue. So um, that'd be interesting um, hearing from lots of different backgrounds, different industries, um, learning a lot on the job, soaking in as much as you can. Um, some weeks you would be learning about more technical pieces of tax law and maybe presenting a training to your team. So there was a lot of learning opportunities um, in a group, but also going off and um, kind of looking at the tax law or writing documents or um, proposals, um, you know, just by yourself as well. So every um, week was very different. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of different things to learn constantly. So it was um, always interesting. That's fantastic and probably a good segue because I've got the next question for you about what was the most challenging part of the program? Yeah, so for me, um, what was most challenging was continually having to step outside of your comfort zone. So you get a lot of different opportunities working at the tax office and especially as a grad, you're encouraged to take on as many opportunities as is feasible. Um, so for me, the grad year was full of some quite nerve wracking moments. So that would be, you know, calling a taxpayer for the first time and having that first um, interaction, um, maybe, you know, presenting a topic to people that are more tax, tax technical than you, um, and also um, just having control over your own work. Um, doing those things for the first time can be quite confronting in such a large organisation, um, and maybe are things that people initially want to shy away from um, and not stick their hand up to do certain things. Um, so as a grad and a piece of advice would be to really, you know, put yourself out there. It might not be something that you initially want to do, but it is definitely very rewarding. So even though I would find it quite difficult to, you know, put myself out there, it was really great for building your networks. Um, you know, you learn so much more when you put yourself out there. And also um, it makes you a really good competitive candidate for promotions after the grad program. So it was definitely something that was challenging, um, but it is definitely rewarding. Fantastic. Excuse my hand going up. I'm just checking the chat box as we go because I'm on, on the iPad. So I don't mean to interfere. So next question I've got, it, and I'll hit Aiden with it about what did you find was the most interesting part for you? Um, for me, probably the most interesting would be um, getting an opportunity to be able to see kind of the broad range of work that is done in the ATO and how it all kind of interacts and combines from one end um, of 
the work to all the way through to the other. So during the grad um, program, you get obviously you get put in a couple of different rotations. So you get to meet a lot of people who work in all the different areas. Um, yeah, you also get a um, yeah, just a, a kind of a good appreciation of kind of um, what other like issues and troubles like other people kind of do, like what kind of work they have. And it kind of um, reflects on, you know, how you approach problems and such in the future. Fantastic. I've got a question in the group. Is any of you work at the ATO before the grad program? Uh, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, yep. So I did actually work for the ATO for a bit over a year before I started the grad program. And that was in the um, University Partnership Employment Program that Damien mentioned before. Um, so it's basically like an internship program where you can work a couple of days a week um, doing some real hands-on um, work in the area that you're interested in. So uh, my placement was in a data scientist um, team. So I got to learn all about um, the data that the ATO holds and how it analyzes and uses it to um, benefit taxpayers by um, increasing compliance and um, uh, identifying fraud and things like that. So um, yeah, it was a really great experience for me uh, when I, I was only in second year uni at that time and hadn't really decided what I wanted to do with my degree at the end. So I thought, hey, I'll go do this internship, um, this program at the ATO and see if data science is for me. Um, and I absolutely loved it. So um, hence I went on to the grad program in the data analytics area. Um, but yeah, it, it was really good because you could have some real hands-on experience. And um, you also got to know the ATO systems and programs, which meant when it was time to come to the grad program, I felt like I could hit the ground running. I already had my desk set up. I already had um, you know my login done and it made the transition really easy. Fantastic. And we're so glad you did because you've done wonders too, which is great. I don't know, we're short on time. We've got three minutes, and I think these next questions are probably the big ones everyone wants to hear about. And feel free to jump in at any stage. It's about applying for the and the grad program. So application and interview, any tips or advice for the listeners out there? Who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, I guess the biggest piece of advice would be, um, so the application process initially um, is a bit of a written area where it's kind of like your resume. Um, there's a bit of information to fill out and then there's a small written component. Um, and I think, really think about why you wanna apply. Um, it's, you know, take your time um, writing that, really think about it um, because that's one of the first things we look at. There are a few other stages along the way, um, but mostly just be yourself. Um, don't think about maybe what the ATO wants to hear, um, you know, it's all about personality and um, really a passion for what we do. You know, we have a really important job to do. So um, yeah, definitely just be yourself. Um, the process is long and, you know, it's a very competitive process. So don't be too disheartened by it. Um, it is a small investment, you know, in each, you know, different, I think we do a resume component and then there's you know some other stages where you do you know some other testings um, before you get to the interview process um, so yeah definitely just hold on tight um, it it will be worth the investment in the end um, but yeah just keep your mind open to the process and um, yeah just definitely be yourself thanks for look like Sam saying we're at at time yep Good. could we steal 30 more seconds yeah, what, one, one more tip and then we'll... Uh, I was going to say, I'll leave it to Melissa and Aidan. You've got one, one sentence each to everyone on the team. <laughs> okay, um, I'll go first. Uh, so my tip is to try and think um, when it comes to the interview stage, um, try and think of different um, areas of your life that you can draw on, not necessarily work experience, but the ATO likes to hear about a broad range of your experience. Maybe you um, volunteer in a sports club or something like that and you can... You can um, yeah, build a picture of your whole self um, during the application. Over to you, Aiden, lucky last. Yeah, um, I guess the final tip would be to just keep an open mind on the type of work that you might end up doing. Um, uh, like I had a pretty decent idea of what I would be doing when I you know, got in here, but then that completely changed and I found stuff that I enjoyed way more. And yeah, I'm, I think I'm much happier for it. So yeah, keep an open mind and yeah, good luck. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Sam, for that extra 
minute. <laughs> thanks, Damien. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Damien. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks, Melissa. Great session today. Hopefully, everyone got something out of it.